Hello everyone, thank you for being here. This is Goose Auto Works and this is what we're doing today. All right, so we're jumping straight into this one guys. The first thing we're gonna do is take out those turbo silencers. So there's gonna be two of them. One will be right up here and then the other one will be right here. This is gonna be a seven millimeter. So we'll just go and loosen each of these up. And this one's a little weird to get to because it's in the back. So I'm gonna use this extension here to get to that one. I'll go ahead and get this one up on the top as well. Now we're just gonna start pulling everything apart. We got a bigger one right down here, a smaller one right up here. Okay, so this one I had to work at a little bit. Where these three notches are, it's going to be these little raised edges and they're going to want to grab on there. So. It'll come out, but not as easy as the one on the bottom. Put those out, you're just gonna put everything back together. All right, with all this button back up, we'll move on to the second mod, which is the VTA or vent to atmosphere mod. So if you can see your oil filter right here, this tube that runs in front of it, we're gonna take that off. So that's gonna go from the bottom of your intercooler up to this pipe right here. And what these trucks have is not necessarily a blow off valve, but a diverter valve. It's basically the same thing, but when excess pressure needs to be released from the intercooler it will just recirculate that air back up into your intake what we're going to do is take it off so that that diverter valve acts more like a blow-off valve gives us that pressure release gives us a little bit of that sound we're looking for so we'll take that off and then we'll end up capping this side all right so under the truck here's the intercooler so the front of the vehicle is that way so this is going to be on the driver's side and what you're going to want to do to remove this this is the diverter valve is grab this gray collar you're going to twist it and then you're going to pull everything back you'll do the same up top although it's kind of in an awkward position so you may have to fiddle around with it a little bit to get that off then with both sides released you're just going to grab the tube and fish it out i'm going to pull it out from the bottom i feel like there's less things to have to navigate that way So here's a better look at the tube and the collars. So when it's installed, you're just gonna grab this collar. And when, when you turn it like that, do you see how those little interior grips will just recede back in? And so this is how you would lock it in. This is how you would open it and then pull it off. Now where these come into play is where we removed the tubing from the upper section where it connects to the intake. We're gonna need to cap that off and we're gonna do that by putting one of these chair tips over the nipple that's left on the intake and securing it with a worm gear clamp. Now it's time to cap that off and I put the clamp on here and tightened it as much as I could while still leaving it somewhat loose. Um, because again, it's a little awkward positioning down there. So the less time you have to spend down there with a wrench or a ratchet, the better. So we'll go ahead and get this put on again. Yeah, it's a little awkward. So you'll have to do your best to hunt in the dark here, but just make sure you give it a good push to make sure it's fully seated. All right, good. And we'll go ahead and tighten it up now. Now these top clamps were all seven millimeters. This one's an eight, that's fine. Uh, only mention it just to say that if you do end up having to switch, don't be too surprised. But let's get this tightened up and move on. 
Okay, so that is both mods taken care of. I'll take you on a quick ride along to give you a before and after, see how much we're able to tell the difference, see how much we're able to actually pick up on camera for you guys to tell that difference. And uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and we'll do that and see what we think. So not really sure how much you were able to pick up on the video, but I will say yeah, the, the turbo noise is a little bit louder. Um, I always could hear the turbo some, so some EcoBoost owners say they can't ever hear it at all. Um, I always could. I do think it is louder though. The VTA though is definitely noticeable now. Um, beforehand maybe every once in a while I kind of sort of thought I might have heard something um, but after doing this after you know when you let off the throttle after building boost it's very noticeable um, you can you can tell it's happening so that's pretty cool um, now neither of these things are going to be permanent neither of these things should give you any kind of check engine light or anything like that the only thing that you're gonna want to make sure that you do is cap off the top side of the intake because that will be sucking in air otherwise as far as the diverter valve, I'm gonna leave mine open. Some people put a filter on it or something like that. The thing is, is it's closed by default and when it is open, it's expelling positive pressure. So the chances of something going into it are extremely, extremely small. So in my opinion, you can leave it open. Um, but yeah, two quick mods, five bucks, 10 minutes of your time. Again, they're reversible if you so choose, um, but if you like this video, please like the video. <laughs> and uh, subscribe if you want to see more content involving this truck, the old truck, the Mustang. Um, got a lot of plans going down for the future. So thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.